Welcome everybody to How Fast Will It Go and today we're dealing with the 1957 Maserati 300S now this has 761 horsepower 551 pounds feet of torque from a 3.6 litre turbocharged inline 6 engine the car itself now weighs 1807 pounds now has all wheel drive and it can do 0 to 16 in 1.512 seconds and 0 to 104.3 42 seconds, so it's far from the most powerful car that we've had on this series, and uh, yeah, has easily one of the uh, smallest engines that we've used on this series as well. But as you can tell by the acceleration times, it's really rather quick, even with that lack of power due to the uh, minimal amount of weight that it has. And these older, you know, more race oriented vehicles tend to be quite quick on this series due to their uh, lack of weight and uh, the fact that they've got very little. Uh, new technology to uh, hinder their uh, top speed. So yeah, nonetheless, let's get out there and see what this car can do. So this is easily one of the quickest cars we've had in terms of acceleration. Very few cars have uh, been able to get to 60 in uh, just over 1.5 seconds. There's 200. Pretty decent handling for a car like this as well. That's 230, 240. Fifty. Whoa oh dear. Did not see the Subaru there. Too busy looking at my speedometer. Yeah, we didn't get any more than 250 anyway, so it's fine. It's still fairly decent from an old car like this, but still way off the likes of other contemporary cars of the time. I actually didn't see what speed we're up to there before we uh, hit that car. That's why I rewound it. Yeah, 250 so far, so let's get around this roundabout and see what we can do on the other side of the motorway. Uh, again though, considering it doesn't even have 800 horsepower, this is uh, still able to get up to speeds far higher than other cars that have had more horsepower than this. So it's not a disappointment even if it only ever ends up at 250. Let's see as we go along this side of the motorway. Yeah, I just don't think we have the uh, horsepower really to overcome the uh, limited amount of space that we have on these uh, motorways to uh, get up to a certain rate of speed. Which is a bit unfortunate because I was hoping that this would be quicker, but yeah, the lack of horsepower and the limited amount of torque really isn't helping here. It's a big shame that you can't put any other engines in this car. Well, you can, you can put in the uh, the uh, turbo rally engine, but that produces even less horsepower than this, though it does have more torque. So. Who knows whether or not that's probably the better car to go, uh, better engine to go with, just because it has more torque. But even so, it has less horsepower. It has about nearly 100 horsepower less than this, so yeah, pretty doubtful that that would be any quicker. But yeah, there we go, 250 miles an hour. It's far from the uh, fastest car that we've had on this series, but it's also far from the slowest. And like I said, other cars that have had far more horsepower than this have been uh, slower. So uh, yeah, it's no uh, great shame that this isn't any. Uh, quicker to be honest as it's managed to match the Aston Martin Vantage from 2018. It's beaten the Mitsubishi GTO, Porsche 356A, Aston Martin DBR1 which is probably the uh, most similar car to this uh, as it's also from 1958 and uh, yeah we're also quicker than the uh, Formula Drift Ferrari 599, GTB Fiorano, Triumph TR6, Mercedes-Benz SL65, Morgan Aero Supersports and the Austin Healey 3000 Mark III and we're slightly behind the Bentley Turbo R 
the Porsche 3, uh, 550A Spider, which again is a uh, similar car to this from the same decade. A Nissan Fairlady Z version S Twin Turbo, Alfa Romeo Giulia TZ2, and a uh, Formula Drift Dodge Viper SRT10. And we are far slower than the uh, similarly aged Jaguar d -Tac, which is only a year older than this, and that managed 285 miles an hour. But I think that's simply purely because that had far more horsepower than this. But what this car does have going for it is the fact that it's still got really good handling and uh, braking, and it's still really rather responsive despite having all-wheel drive, which it was never meant for. Whereas that Jaguar D-Type is a pretty much a glass can, and it's a one shot at 285, and then you just struggle to ever get up to that speed again without, you know, starting back where you were uh, started from to get that speed in the first place. So, uh, yeah, this is still an overall decent car. It's just a shame, really, that you can't put any other engines in it, especially considering Maserati have some cracking engines that you could put in this car or uh, get any more power out of this engine but yeah there we go anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye